Let's start with some very basic functions. The first one is the sum. So the sum, very straightforward. Uh, what you need to do, you tap sum and then you select the data that you want to sum, press enter, gives you the total. Same for average, select the data, gives you the average. Min will give you the smallest value in at least, and max will give you the highest value. A tip is that you can, instead of uh, having to select the data every time, you can give a name to that list. For instance, sales, and after, instead of selecting the data, you can just write some sales. Average sales, mean sales, and max sales. And then you can go to formula, name manager, and you should be able to see your name here. Another tip is that uh, the numbers don't have to be continuous. You can do some press control and select a few fields. And that should give you the sum of those fields only. Concatenate is used to concatenate fields, but not only fields, but also values that you could input directly. For instance, you could have concatenate here hard-coded C5, blank, and D5. The len function gives you the length of a text. So for instance here, the length is 5. Left brings back the left component of a text, but would only bring back the number of characters that you specify in the second field. So here I have left, C5, bring back only 2. Right is the same thing, but on the, on the other side of the field. Right, field, how many you want to bring back. There is a newer version of concatenate. It uh, occurred only from 2000 Excel 2019 and above. It's called concat. Uh, the main advantage is you can concatenate a full range of fields directly. You cannot do that with concatenate itself. Another tip is to use the symbol and a percent. So you would just put the name of the field, symbol, and another field, and I will concatenate as well. So it's a little bit simpler. Let's move on to some logical function. If makes a test and puts one value or another based on the outcome of that test. For instance, here I am testing if the value of the sales is greater than 2000. And if it is, I put yes. And if it is not, I put no. If I drag that down. And it can be used with if to provide more than one condition. For instance, if a person is a graduate and the sales is greater than 2000, then I put yes or else I put no. Or is exclusive. For instance, if the sales is smaller than 2000 or greater than 5000, I put yes. If not, I put no. Some date functions. The most common one is today. So just put today, empty brackets, and gives you today's date. So here I have the, I am in Australia at the moment, so I have the Australian format with day, month, and year. But you can change all these, obviously. Now we'll give you the date and the time. Just put now, empty brackets, give you this. The date function calculates a date based on days, month, year, if you are from this part of the world. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a matter of uh, using uh, the format that you have, and it will take a day, a month, and a year, and it will come up with a proper date. Date diff, as its name implies, calculates the difference between two dates. So you would have one date, and a second date, and then you can calculate the difference either in day, month, year. You just need to put the proper hard-coded parameter at the end. T for days, M for month, Y for years. Now, a tip on dates is if you don't want to have date plus time, you just uh, go under format number and you just specify time. And that gives you just the time and then you can have 
date and time in different fields. That's it for dates. So VLOOKUP is looking for a value in a vertical array and is bringing back a relative value. For instance, here I have the function VLOOKUP that is looking for John into this array of data. And the two that I have here, that means that I want to bring back values from the second colon when I find this uh, John. And false means that I want to find the exact value. I mean, true would mean the approximate value, which only makes sense when you're looking for numbers. Really. It is not recommended. I would use false all the time as a parameter. So it looks from left to right only. That's something that is good to know. And it looks for the value in the first column. Another example is I could be looking for the same value John, but I would bring this time the value of the third colon and that would give me 4000 here. Index is used to retrieve a value in a given row and an even colon in an array of data. For instance, in this array of data here, I retrieve the fifth row in a second colon and that gives me Garcia here. So you're giving the coordinates of one point and it would bring it back. Match is a little bit similar. You're looking for the value as well, but it would tell you which row was containing this value. So this is used in function usually with other functions. For instance, match and index are often used together. I mentioned that VLOOKUP is used to look for a value vertically. HLOOKUP is the corresponding function, but for looking for a value in horizontally. For instance, if I look for April day, and I want it to bring me back the second row, I would input this function. Count is counting how many numerical values there is in an array of data. For instance, if I count colon here, it will bring 12 only. It would count all the numbers, it would also count zero, but it will not count the text and it will not count the empty cells. Count is very similar, but the only difference is it also includes no numerical fields to its total. For instance, here it counts as well the two text fields in its total. Those functions are very useful when you want to know how many rows there are in an array. For instance, here, if I want to know how many employees, I would just do count A, and then that would give me 10 employees. Count if tells you how many fields there are that meet a specific criteria. Might be easier to understand with an example. So here, for instance, I'm counting in that column how many graduates there are, which means how many of those fields have yes as a value. Some if is the same, but we need another component. We need to tell them which fields they need to add. So we do the check in one field and then we sum the value of another field. That, for instance, here, I'm looking in a graduate colon to check how many have yes. And then if they are yes, I add all the sales values. Bearing in mind that you could do it with the same colon. You could check, for instance, are the cells greater than 1200? And if they are, then just add those. Now, count ifs <laughs> has replaced count if in uh, 2007. So that allows you, as before, just to add several conditions. For instance, here you could just count how many graduates we have by doing this and then by adding this we would also count how many of those have had a sale greater than 1000. So we're checking data on the two fields and we just give you a total day. Same ifs, the same, we just check one criteria and then do a test on two colons for instance. So here the same here, he would do the same thing we would calculate the total for all the graduates that have sold more than $1,000. So 
But there is another function that's called average, does the same thing, average if and average ifs. But instead of counting or putting the sum, it just calculates the average.